Hello, 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 and welcome to episode 131 of the Mo Money Podcast. I'm your host, Jessica Morehouse. Thank you so much for joining me for a brand new episode of the show. Super excited about this episode because I am talking to uh, kind of like the it lady when it comes to personal finance in Canada. I'm talking about Kelly Keene. She is all over uh, TV. She's on like pretty much every show. She has nine books out. She's the author of nine books. I've never heard of that. That is insane. Uh, She was the host of the W Network's Burn My Mortgage television show. She's a consumer advocate for the Financial Planning Standards Council. And uh, she's just a huge advocate for financial literacy, which is why I really wanted to have her on the show to pick her brain and uh, share some of her wisdom with you. And also, fun fact, She's super, super, super nice. So you are going to love, love, love this episode. But before I get to it, here is a few words about this episode's sponsor. So you're racing against the clock to wrap up three projects, prepping for a meeting later in the afternoon, all while trying to tackle a mountain of paperwork. Welcome to life as a freelancer. Challenging? You bet it is. But our friends at FreshBooks believe the rewards are so worth it. Let's be honest, the working world has changed. With the growth of the internet, there's never been more opportunities for the self-employed. To meet this need, FreshBooks is excited to announce the launch of an all-new version of their cloud accounting software. It's been redesigned from the ground up and custom-built for exactly the way you work. Get ready for the simplest way to be more productive, organized, and most importantly, get paid quickly. The all-new FreshBooks is not only ridiculously easy to use, It's also packed full of powerful features. Create and send professional-looking invoices in less than 30 seconds, set up online payments with just a couple of clicks and get paid up to four days faster, and see when your client has seen your invoice and put an end to all those guessing games. FreshBooks is offering a 30-day unrestricted free trial to all of my listeners. To claim it, just go to freshbooks.com slash mo and enter Mo Money Podcast in the How Did You Hear About Us section. Once again, that's freshbooks.com slash M-O and enter Mo Money Podcast in the How Did You Hear About Us section. Thank you, Kelly, for joining me on the Mo Money Podcast. I am thrilled to have you on the show. I'm so excited to be here. Thanks for having me, Jessica. You're so welcome. Uh, I wanted to have you on the show because you are an awesome uh, role model, basically, when it comes to uh, money, personal finance, and just being an awesome, stellar rock star woman. Oh, uh, you're so kind. As are you. <laughs> As are you. <laughs> um, so, but before we kind of, I start like pummeling you with questions about some of the topics I really want to discuss with you. Um, I would like to get to know you a little bit more in case people listening uh, don't know some of your backstory, even though you've been around for uh, a while and have done a lot of stuff. So uh, were you like, how did you, now you're kind of like this, you know, personal finance expert that's always on TV and how you have nine books, which is bonkers. Uh, how did you, where did you start? Like, how did you get into this kind of world? It is bonkers. It is bonkers. <laughs> oh my goodness. Where do I even start? If I know. You, if you went to my really um, very much in need of an update website, it would say at the top, uh, my mission is for you to feel good about money. And as simplistic as that sounds, it took me a really, really long time to come up with that because I did not feel good about money for a really long time. So we can talk about that. So that's yeah. my why. Yeah. Is I get up every day wanting Canadians to feel good about money. The why behind my why is if you're familiar, uh, if you've ever heard of Maslow's hierarchy of needs, maybe so. I have. Okay, so um, you can Google it. Think of a pyramid. And Maslow was an American psychologist, and he basically identified that at different levels in a person's potential life, um, their their ability to be happy increases as they move up. So at the bottom of the pyramid, you're just looking after putting a roof over your head, paying your bills, feeding your kids, stuff like that. That's the bottom of the pyramid. And unfortunately, a lot of people never make it up to these self-actualized parts that are more fun and, and um, you know, but quite frankly, they, they take money to get up there. So, yeah. so, so the why behind it is that when people are at the bottom um, I don't believe that they make the best decisions that, uh, that they would if, if there were more money in their life. I don't think that people are their best spouse, their best mom or dad, their best child, their best employee, their best Canadian citizen. So 
Um, my mission is for Canadians to feel good about money so they can come up that pyramid. Mm-hmm. That so they're like not always in kind of survival mode. And I guess you're kind of talking about when you are that lower level, you make decisions based off, yeah, kind of survival Right. which may not necessarily, those are usually kind of short-term uh, decisions, not kind of long-term, I guess. Yeah, there's a really great book that I love called Scarcity. I'm not sure if you read it or not. And they talk about, have you? No. <laughs> I'm like, mm-hmm, I will read it right no, away, no, right, right not, after this. I'm not trying to put you on the spot, but just it's such a good book. And they talk about, um, I was also on the National Steering Committee for Financial Literacy. So mm-hmm. uh, Jane Rumi is the financial literacy leader. And it what it, I serve two terms and they have another, or I serve one term, excuse me, and they have another um, uh, committee right now. Uh, and really trying to address, like, you know, what's on the hearts and minds of Canadians when it comes to financial literacy and all of that. So they, back to the book about scarcity yeah. is that um, the authors examine, you know, you can have a lot of time, but if, if you're something is really weighing on you, if your mom or dad is having surgery or your child, that's going to suck out your bandwidth. If, right. If you, so it's like time versus bandwidth and, and, and mm-hmm. your age, you totally get what that means. Right. Yeah. Is that when a person is struggling financially, they don't know if they can pay the bills. They don't know if they're going to lose their hydro. They don't right? They don't know yeah. if they can survive. Their bandwidth is like gone. Yeah. Um, and when I say that my, uh, my mission is for names to feel good about money. And I didn't always, I'll just give you a quick backstory. Yes. On that one. Okay. Um, so I was raised by a single mom, incredible mom, um, raising three kids and times were really tough. We were at the bottom of that pyramid and I, you know, she, she would cry about money. She would worry about money. She did everything right. She never put, you know, anything on a credit card she couldn't afford to. And she mm-hmm. could have definitely done that because if times were so tough. Yeah. And, um, you know, she taught us about abundance. We can talk about that. Even at, at the bottom, there was this abundance and love. But I had a bunch of really wealthy uncles. Oh. So, yeah, I lived, you know, at the bottom of the pyramid and saw opulence and saw the confidence that came with having money and an abundance of money and all that type of stuff. Um, so that kind of messed me up <laughs> a mm-hmm. little bit. And then something happened uh, at, at when I was maybe around 12 or 13. And one of my uncles bought my mom a house. Mm-hmm. And that gift moved us right up out of that pyramid. We you know, all of a sudden she has a home that's paid off free and clear. And I know, I don't just think and believe, I know I would not be here talking to you today if it wasn't for that gift from my uncle. There's no way, right? There's no way because how would I have been able to come out of that and see from another angle of, um, you know, how to build wealth or all that type of stuff. So I know, I know what's because of that gift. So because of that struggle, and then I accidentally ended up being in the financial industry. (laughs) 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 Um, And so the, 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 the quick um, wrap up to my background is I was in the financial industry for 12 years. A lot of that was managing and handling money of very high net worth individuals that had very complex cases. Mm -hmm. And I realized that people were really messed up about money. Like I had one client who had millions of dollars was in his eighties and lived in Edmonton, Alberta and would literally freeze his pipes because he would not turn the heat up enough um, in the winter time. And he was worth millions of dollars. He had no kids, no spouse, no one to leave the money to, but you're too young to appreciate. Well, you probably appreciate, uh, let me not paint any brushes, but I don't even, I've lost the, the in touch with the generation that went through the great depression. So that's mm-hmm. what he went through. So he had that scarcity mentality. Yeah. And then, uh, I had another client who's a baby boomer who probably had a parent like that and said, I'm never going to live like that. And he made a million dollars net in his pocket every single year. And he's mm-hmm. several million dollars in the hole. Weird. He had not one, but two more savings horse cars, he yep. like got divorces, all that time. So I realized, you know, there's these spectrums of having a lot of money, yeah. but not necessarily enjoying it, earning a lot of money, but not necessarily keeping it. Mm-hmm. So, you know, where is, where is that perfect spot for you to be? And, and, and that's when I decided to write my first book. Uh, and then I ended up getting out of the financial industry 
uh, as you know, somebody advising and for the last 13 years been writing books and, and uh, working with different companies and the public and all that type of stuff, having fun. Mm-hmm. Canadians, you know, helping them feel better about their financial situation. Absolutely. Yeah. No, I love that you talked a lot about just like the psychology behind money because uh, for a while when I was just kind of you know, learning about personal finance. I really thought it was about the numbers or just about achieving certain things, doing certain things right, taking some boxes. But really, it has a lot to do with, like you said, the scarcity mentality, abundance mentality. Um, And even though I was not around for the Great Depression, I'm certainly not a baby boomer, uh, kind of my experience being a millennial that uh, graduated university during the, uh, the the recent recession, it's like almost like I find a lot of people in my kind of generation have not so so much like the Great Depression or anything like that, but we do have more of a scarcity mentality. And that's why I feel like you'll hear so many of us are getting side hustles because we're terrified of wow. being laid off or not being able to find another job because that was the case for lots of us. Yeah. So it's and, and but it's like also it's not it's not that kind of mid level. It's like we haven't really found that balance. We were still kind of like like most of us are kind of workaholics. We just work all the yeah. time because we're afraid of something happening and just being totally broke and destitute. <laughs> wow. Wow. That's, yeah. I, I mean that's know. not all millennials, yeah, but yeah. a lot of the ones I yeah. I interact with, yeah. Interesting. That's so I, it's so terrifying. Like I know too, when I went out to be an entrepreneur, uh, some days I have to admit, I really envied the people that have these great jobs and had great pension oh, yeah. and had all these benefits that I used to have when I yep. worked at the bank and all that type of stuff. But what's interesting, Jessica, is that I'm seeing some of those individuals now that have had incredible jobs and got a package at 55 yep. and, or there was a restructuring at the company and so, yeah, like, I think if, if you have that, that hustle, that drive, that whatever at a young age, that's not a bad thing. No, that's it's not a bad younger, thing. Right. I mean, yeah. baby boomers, they, they had the best of everything. Unfortunately, I'm Gen X, mm-hmm. so I, yeah. I didn't get that either. But um, it, it is a very tough time for millennials, tough time for everyone, but also the most exciting time I think yeah. ever to be on earth. Like, yeah, it's like you can make like if you want to make money, you like can, you can do it you can do it. You can yeah. start a business easily. You can raise money. You can like, uh, yeah. like I, there's zero chance I could have written nine books if it wasn't for the internet, if it wasn't yeah. for, right, zero, like not yeah. possible. So super, super exciting time. If you mm-hmm. see it that way, but yeah. yeah, you're right. Nonetheless, incredible challenges for everyone really yeah. right now. Yeah. Yeah. It's just like a time that I think us, you know, everyone really, it's like, we have to evolve really, really rapidly. Like I was even just talking to my husband today about, uh, you know, he works in the music industry and his, the music industry has literally, it's not the same thing it was 10 years ago when he uh, first started out. And it's incredible that you, you, how adaptable you really have to be. Like, there's no like, oh, I just want, and I used to have this mentality that, cause that's kind of how, you know, I saw my parents, you know, they went to school, they got jobs, they stayed at those jobs forever. And they just, you know, enjoyed their money and everything. I'm like, oh, I can do that too. And no, no. Yeah. <laughs> no. yeah I, I, think, I think that that's almost like so risky to do that today. I um, think, oh yeah. There's, like, I don't know like, many people that do that. Yeah. Like it would be risky to just be like, yeah, I got a contract and I'm cool and I'm an employee and I'm good. It's like mm, when yeah. giants are falling, like large companies and you're yeah. so right. Like I am such a lover of music and I just look at my behavior of how I used to go into an HMV. You probably don't I know. know what that I know. Was. I remember yeah, HMV. Right? You went to HMV and it was like, oh, like singles would come out and then you bought a single. And then when iTunes came out, just like blew my mind. I spent tons of money yep. on iTunes and now Spotify, like this yeah. game changer, game changer, game changer. And you're like, holy moly. Yeah. You're right. Like if you don't adapt, you die. You just, you, yeah. like, you die. So yeah. It's, yeah, it's tough. It's tough to keep up. That's for exactly. sure. And it's, it's not even just our, you know, millennials and, and, and people younger than us, Gen, Gen Z. I mean, that's a whole other, yeah. who knows what, yeah, they're scary. They're like going to be super yeah. smart um, with computers <laughs> and overtake everything. But uh, like thinking of like, you know, 
a personal example, my dad, he worked at his company for like 25 or 30 years and he was in the 50s and he got laid off. He got a package and he's like, what do I do now? I've been a graphic designer for this one company for most of my life. And so he, I had to kind of be like, this is okay. I've had to deal with this a lot in my like short career. So I'll kind of help you navigate. This isn't the end of the world. So in his 50s, he had to go back to school. Uh, But actually now he's doing, you know, it's it's a different career path. Now he works in the film industry doing kind of background design and stuff like that for graphics or whatever. I'm not really sure what it is. I don't know how to do it, but he does it. Yeah. And uh, and now he works on contracts. So he's, yeah. which is so weird for him to wrap his, he's yeah. like, but I was on payroll and I had a, you know, I'm like, this is what it is. It's the nature of it. Just roll with it. Exactly. Yeah. Like it's just going to be so much easier if you roll with it, right? Exactly. Like, how can you benefit from it? How can you take advantage for, of it? As opposed yeah. to why, why is it like this? That, that, uh, that doesn't help. Exactly. Exactly. So I'd like yeah. to like dive in a little bit about just like, why do people have these different mentalities of scarcity? Like that millionaire who it's, it's funny that you mentioned like he didn't want to turn on the heat. I'm like, I still have that mentality from my parents. They're always like, turn off the lights, turn off the heat yeah. unless it's really like they never turn on the heat. I mean, they live in BC, yeah. so it's, it's okay. It really never right. gets that cold. But even in Toronto, I'm like, eh, it's not that cold. I'll just put a blanket on. <laughs> <laughs> Good for you. Good for you. That's that's yeah, it's I mean, there's there's frugality and then there's intelligent frugality. So l- let me give you a for yeah. instance and let's have fun with this and see what you think. I'm yeah. curious. Okay. Um I, I, I've talked about this on uh, the Marilyn Dennis show and on the radio show with her and Roger and and there are some differing opinions of uh of the answers to this. Okay, so let's imagine right now you absolutely want this lamp. You're in the market for this lamp, you're at a store, absolutely picked it up. You love it. It's $50. You're ready to pay the clerk. Just before you do, your friend pops over, taps you on the shoulder and says, you know what, Jessica, that lamp, if you just walked across the street and a couple of blocks, you can have it for $25. Mm-hmm. Do you go and get the lamp across the street, a couple yeah. blocks over, right? 20, yeah. you go quick calculation, $25. That's 50%. Of course you're going to go and get the lamp. Okay. So you've determined you're going to go and get the lamp. So then a week later, you go and you're in the market for a big screen TV and you're shopping for this big screen TV. You're getting ready to pay for it. It's $1,175. That same friend comes, taps you on the shoulder, says, you know what, Jessica, if you go across the street and a couple of blocks over, you can have that big screen TV for $1,150. So you go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I probably would because I like a deal. <laughs> <laughs> so here, this is what's really interesting. So the moral of the story is it's the same $25. Economics says that we are rational people. We calculate things. We weigh the pros and cons. And that $25 here is $25 there. However, uh, a lot of people will say they did a quick calculation with the percentage and mm-hmm. they would go for the lamp but they wouldn't go for the TV. Yeah. So, because it's just a couple of, you know, it's like 2%, why would I bother? So there is that question of, is it rational to go for it or not? But then the question that I had with Marilyn Roger is Marilyn said she would not go for the TV, even though it's the same $25 because her time is yeah. worth a lot. And yeah. she also felt that the process might've been a bit longer in negotiating with the TV. So now you see where it starts as something simple. Yeah. It's $25 in the same example people start to color it with their background of, but you can make more money. You can't have more time. Um, you know, if you had a, a, a childhood where your parents scrimped and sacrificed a lot or didn't turn yeah. up their feet, mm-hmm. you might say, I don't turn up my heat. But maybe if you had a sibling, your sibling coded it differently and said, I'm not going to live like that. I'm going to turn up my heat. I'm going to... Right. Yeah. I'm going to live more lavishly. And for me, I did have that poor kid syndrome when I was mm-hmm. growing up. I think again, too, because of the being at the bottom, but seeing yeah. wealthy. And I spent my 20s. I'm one of the, the few personal finance people out there that admit that I did everything wrong. I didn't go bankrupt or anything yeah. like that, but I really hurt my credit. I really overspent on department store cards. <laughs> I, re- I had the stuff, you yeah. know, I had the Mercedes, I had the everything. When yeah. I was 21, I had the cushy Ooh. stuff. Oh yeah. Ooh. But I was living up with my millionaire clients. I was, I was competing with the Joneses when I did not have the income to do it. And then one day it hit me. And it was in crunching the numbers. And I was in the industry. Yeah. And it hit me. And I looked at all my stuff. And I was like, I am going to be a slave to this stuff. 
mm-hmm. for how long? And I calculated it and I'm like, no more. Yeah. No more. Now, I still like my stuff. Don't yeah. get me wrong. I am a spender. Yeah. I have to find ways to curtail that. I yeah. wish I had your intelligent frugality. Hey, I spend money too. I spend <laughs> money too. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we, it's like air. We breathe it. It's exactly. Just, it's like, are we enjoying spending the money? Are mm-hmm. we leaving money on the table? Are yeah. we not negotiating what we could? It's all of those money mindsets determine if we're even going to bother, if we're going to even try to figure out a budget, if we're going to read a book, watch your podcast, yeah. it's, it's that mental game. So yeah, we need to yeah. make money our friend. Yeah. Um, and I, one thing that I learned too, and it honestly was only a few years ago that it really like clicked in my mind was, uh, you know, I, I was always like a cheap person, like cheap, not okay. even frugal, just cheap. And that was my kind of scarcity mentality. Cause I yeah. never wanted to get into debt. I always grew up knowing that debt was wrong. Uh, I guess I got that from my parents, but they never were in debt, but they always like emphasized yeah. that if you don't have the cash, you can't afford it, which is great. Great yeah. advice. Uh, but I kind of took it to the extreme and mm. just like, especially the first few years out of university, living on my own, finally making money, but not that much money. I just, I lived like a popper basically. Yeah, wow. Um, and I'm like, I can't live like that forever. It's not, you know, fun. So right. I kind of realized, okay, it's you, it's not, there's nothing wrong with spending money. You just need to know why you're spending money, which you kind of talked about your why. And also just like spend money on what you value. And I'm like, oh, yeah. that makes a lot of sense. Cause you know, a lot of the things that people were spending, like, I don't really care about clothes. I just don't care. I get them yeah. when I need them, but I don't yeah. like, I don't care. What I do like is food. So I spend most of my money on food. Okay. <laughs> and I think that's okay as long as A, yeah, you're in your you're within your budget, you're not overspending, and you just, yeah, make a clear, you know, conscious decision to spend with your values, I guess, in mind. Yeah, I think that's so clear. And I'm also the consumer advocate for the Financial Planning Standards Council. Mm -hmm. So obviously a huge advocate of using someone like a certified financial planner that's going to sit down with you and say, look, you you know, you need to save up for a vacation and take it. Like you need to save up for these things that are important in your life. And I don't know if you've had him on or not, but if you have in a great interview is Bruce Salary. Oh yeah, I've had him on. He's the best. Isn't he the best? He's the best. I've heard Bruce speak a couple of times. And what I love about him is he says, what's your money for? Yeah. Like, what's your money for? If you love fancy cars, hey, no problem. And if you love dining out, if you love, um, you know, vacations, travel, whatever, you love clothes, make it your thing. But be Mm -hmm. clear about it. Yeah. You also, I call it the buffet of life. You can't go to the buffet and eat everything. Yes. You only have this place. So if you chose to have kids, you chose, that's an expense. If yeah. you, you know, if you chose a lifestyle that you want to have a big fancy house, that's what you took at the buffet. Like mm-hmm. it's also realizing that we just can't have any, everything, but then it comes to the day and age that we live in of yeah. social media and the, the insta effect and yep. the, but look at what they have and look at what they're doing. And it makes it really, really hard to yeah. not do that living up with the Joneses. Really, yeah. really hard. Yeah, I'd say, yeah, it's harder now than ever. Because yeah, everyone is on social media showing their best life, not their real yeah. life, just their best life. Or um, just a snippet of Just their a best snippet. Life. Oh my gosh. Even and right? I do it myself too, because yeah. no one else would want to actually see the Instagram of my real life, which is like watching yeah. Great British Bake Off every night. So <laughs> <laughs> Right. Save yeah. money. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. So yeah, I, I can see it's so easy for people to just see, but they have, and I used to do this all the time too. I used to work in the corporate world. I made a, a decent income and I would take the subway all the time. And I would see all these people in, you know, the financial district in Toronto with these really amazing purses. And I'm like, how the hell do these people? Right. And I know, you know, I, I'd walked, yeah. I knew what their jobs are. I had an idea of their salary. I'm like, how would they afford these purses? Yeah. And at first I'm like, maybe it's me. Maybe I'm being cheap. Maybe I can afford these purses. And then you actually look at the price tag. You're like, no, they can't afford that. <laughs> and it's, but you just get in this mentality like, oh, if normal people are do- buying that, maybe I can also buy that. It's just yeah. a weird, you know, yeah, it's, it's human nature to compare. And, and when I talk about, and I talk extensively about keeping up with the Joneses for a couple of reasons that, you know, back in, in that example of, of that client I had in the time of the depression, which wasn't that long ago. So for all of history, it's only been the last few decades that, um, you know, if, if, in the past, if you were poor, you looked poor. And if you were rich, you looked rich, period. Mm -hmm. Everyone knew there was no, faking it. Like my grandma and grandpa were poor immigrants. There was no faking it regardless of what they wanted to do. 
today with the advent of credit and lines of credit and everything else, Mm -hmm. you can absolutely look rich. And I think too, it was such a blessing for me to work at the bank. And even though I didn't do lending, you know, someone would come across my desk that maybe a teller referred to me Mm -hmm. and I would open their file or look on the computer system. If they had any lending with the bank, sometimes they would refer someone to me and I'm like, this person is like 800,000 in the hole. Why are they coming to see me as an investment manager? And I'd be like, Oh, you know, and then the person's telling me they're just about bankrupt, but everybody in the neighborhood thinks that they're this or that. You cannot, I mean, I had a friend, I'll give you a story to a a friend, my husband and I had years ago and he threw this party for his wife. It was over the top, he spent fifteen thousand dollars on this party. I remember going with it's my. It's like husband. a wedding. That's my right? wedding budget. <laughs> oh my goodness! It was. I eloped because I'm so cheap. Yeah, I should have. I uh, literally after we got married, I'm like, why didn't we elope? Oh we could have gotten God. the best vacation. But, see, you spent on something that was important. That's it did, yeah, did. I did value that wedding. I did value right? that. Don't so regret it. He spends fifteen thousand. I'm, I'm saying to my husband, I know better. I've already written a number of books, everything of that sort. I start comparing, going, yeah. gosh, I don't we're not doing that well, or I certainly wouldn't, I don't feel like I've got 15,000 to spend on a part for you. What are we doing wrong? Next day he's in my office. He's crying. He's like, my company is going bankrupt. And I'm like, why did you spend $15,000 on your wife's party? He's like, I have to keep up appearances. (sighs) Like people are starting to talk. They're saying that we might go bankrupt. We can't like, you know, and it's like, wow, it's the last shame the last taboo that, you know, we're talking about mental health. Thank God. We're talking about, you know, male cancer and getting early diagnosis Mm -hmm. and, you know, women, thank God we talk about these things, but yet we only talk about money when it comes to having money. So we can't talk about RSPs and TFSAs. This is great. But when it comes to a lack of money, then we don't want to talk about it. Yeah, there's right. such shame even now yeah. about talking about it. And, or even, you know, I remember when I was, you know, starting in my career, I was shameful about how much I earned. Who cares? I was earning oh, money. I was oh. making a living. I wasn't in debt, but I was shameful because I knew other people, uh, you know, that went to school the same time I did, that graduated when I did, were making more. And I was shameful. And I'm like, we need to get rid of this yeah. idea that there should be any shame associated with money because, you know, as – you know, I like to share with people, it's like, everything is fixable, yeah. you know? Yeah, absolutely. And it might not be your priority. Like you might, you might be like, I want a different lifestyle. I don't yeah. need to do this. Or, I mean, I had a friend who was a partner at a law firm making just about seven figures who said, forget it. I'm going to Thailand and I don't care. And he's kind of out of money, ready to like sell hot dogs on the beach. And he's fine with that. Like, yeah, you know what I mean? It's like really getting to that core of, when you look at stuff and you look at comparisons, it's like, are you okay with where you are? Exactly. Are you and your family okay with where yeah. you're going? And if you're not, so first you need to get there. And if you're not, get help. Yeah. See a CFP, see a nonprofit yeah. um, credit counselor, talk to someone. Do not feel like you somehow have to fix it yeah. uh, before you go and talk to someone. It's crazy, yeah. but, but yeah. Canadians still aren't reaching out. No, uh, I'm hoping that, you know, with people like you, people like me and chatting you, about it, athlete. yes, talking yes. about it openly, that yes. more people will uh, talk about it and think about it because, yeah, it's, it's, it's a big issue and it's not just about, you know, people, uh, you know, oh, well, I didn't grow up with money or this is just how it is or all my friends right. are broke, so I'm broke, so it's just the norm. It's like, well, it's, it's not. Like, yeah. just like you, you didn't come from money and look where you are today. Same with me. I yeah. came from, you know, modest beginnings and uh, I'm enjoying my life and things are great. So things are, and I, I don't have a financial, like I didn't start with a financial background. I have a film degree and I just started educating wow. myself about finance. So Amazing. if I can do it, anyone could do it. What was your passion? What was your passion to do what you're doing in the personal finance world? Sure. Um, well, I would say it actually did kind of start from that film degree. I graduated, uh, you know, thinking I was going to be a filmmaker. And then I realized, well, it's actually really hard to be an independent filmmaker and make a living. Yeah. Uh, I didn't want to be a starving artist. And so, and I was just really sick of being a broke student and just broke. And so I started reading uh, personal finance blogs and books and realized that, 
getting better at money and, and uh, you know, earning more and saving more and all those things are achievable for anyone yeah. that actually starts, especially the sooner you start, the better, which is why yeah. I was really into it in my 20s. And uh, and that, yeah, I, I wasn't I wasn't a lost cause, I guess. Right. And that's oh, what okay. really fired me up yeah. and then made me want to also share the news with everybody else. It's exciting, isn't it? Like, it is. It's empowering. You, it's exciting that it you don't have to go on a certain path if you don't want to. Exactly. Yeah. And you can do it. The smallest steps, like I don't have the exact study, but uh, I know I was reading a study recently that even if you don't have a cent to your name, just opening up an RRSP yeah. or TFSA, that is enough to like, you know, that little juice card you get, you get the couple punches, yeah. that's like a couple punches right there where you're like, yeah. okay, I did something. And now your subconscious kind of goes to work to help you find the money to maybe put $25 a month away or something of that sort. Then you see it building and you're like, wow, that that was effortless. What exactly. more can I do? It's just like taking any kind of step towards your prosperity. It's Absolutely. And important. kind of going back to what you were talking at the beginning is really figuring out your why. What does money mean yeah. to you? Why do you want to actually take control of your money? And for me, like once I figured that out, I started making more progress than I had in years because Amazing. I had a mission. I had yeah. a reason. And without that, yeah. you just will never stick to a budget and never kind of do the work. Exactly. Yeah. And if you have some issues that you need to deal with, be honest about it. Yeah. Like, yeah, you know, I've got a poor kid syndrome. And so my tendency is going to be, so then how do you curtail that? Okay. I have to make sure I automate all my savings. Yeah. First thing, it's got to come off immediately. Then I save up for stuff, right? So yeah. then when I am buying it, I can feel good about buying it. I did impulse. I saved up for that. I thought about it. I savored it. So yeah. When you know yourself, it's not wrong. Like someone could say, well, how can you be like that and be a personal finance educator? Well, that's me. So, yeah. you know, you know, you know who you are, you know what your tendencies are, where you might be tempted <laughs> or yeah. you might uh, not do well and you trick yourself into getting it done. So Totally. Yeah. yeah. And there's so many different strategies out there. And, but, and, and what I found too over the years is you'll have to try a few things to see which one really sticks and it's okay yeah. to like do something. It doesn't work and then try something else. That's yeah. okay. And you know what? Life is going to happen. You're maybe going to have kids or not have kids. Your parents going to get sick. You might get defrauded. Uh, yeah. You might have a business that goes down and you do yeah. have to file bankruptcy. I mean, life is going to happen. It's fluid. You're going to have major money decisions. It's, yeah. it's not something, it's like your health. It is like, who doesn't want better health? Yeah. So we're all going to have something happen to our health. So it behooves us to, to be managing it and be proactive. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I could probably talk to you for like five hours, Kelly, <laughs> <laughs> but I will not. I won't oh, do that to you. you. <laughs> <laughs> um, before I let you go, where can people yeah. find out more about you and get in touch with you? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Kellykeen.com. I promise a new website is coming soon. Yay. <laughs> okay. uh, I think on Instagram and Facebook, this is so bad. I'm like Kelly Keen Biz. I'm pretty sure. Twitter is Kelly Keen. I'll link it in the show notes as well. So it's easy. Amazing. Thank you. And then also with the Financial Planning Standards Council, we've worked, they've worked very hard and I've been working hard with them too to build uh, their consumer website, which awesome. is financialplanningforcanadians.ca. We've got tons of resources, videos, articles get on there, um, you know, educate and, uh, and keep listening and watching and reading people like you who are doing such an awesome job making money fun <laughs> so we can all feel better about it. I, this has been a lot of fun. That's Thank you great. so much, Kelly, for joining me. It was a pleasure chatting with you. Amazing. Thank you. And that was episode 131 with Kelly Keen. Make sure to check her out at kellykeen.com. And you spell that uh, K-E-L-L-E-Y-K-E-E. H N dot com. Kelly com. Of course, I'll include all this info in the show notes, Jessica Morehouse dot com slash one thirty one. And as you know, to check out show notes for any episode, it's literally just Jessica Morehouse dot com slash whatever the number of the episode is. Um, so uh, before I let you go, there's a few things I definitely do want to share and remind you some exciting things I've got in the queue. Uh, but before I get to that, here's a few words about this episode's sponsor. Did you know that one in three Americans are self-employed? Because of the internet, it's now easier than ever to become self-employed or start a small business. That's why I was able to take a huge leap of faith and leave my nine to five almost a year ago. What started as my side hustle is now my full-time job, and I can run my entire business out of the comfort of my own home. 
Now, it has not been a walk in the park. I will not lie to you about that. Going from employee to entrepreneur is not for the faint-hearted. But what has made the transition so much easier in my life is by using software that really fits my needs. That's why I use FreshBooks as my go-to cloud accounting software. It helps me stay organized. I can pull reports within seconds. I can stay on top of payments from clients. And it basically takes a huge weight off my shoulders come tax time. And what's really cool is FreshBooks just came out with an all-new version of their cloud accounting software. And they're offering a 30-day unrestricted free trial to all of my listeners. If you want to take advantage and try FreshBooks out for yourself, all you have to do is go to freshbooks.com slash mo and enter Mo Money Podcast in the How Did You Hear About Us section. Once again, to try it out for free, go to freshbooks.com slash mo and enter Mo Money Podcast in the How Did You Hear About Us section. All right, so things I've got going on. Well, number one, you would know what's going on if you're on my email list. Um, so make sure to go to jessicamorales.com slash subscribe to keep up with me. Uh, but uh, so things going on. Number one, I've got uh, my Millennial Money Meetup happening in Toronto uh, very soon, November 28th on a Tuesday, downtown Toronto. Uh, I will be joined by Lisa Zamparo. She will be my special guest. And we are talking about credit, how to use it wisely, and debt. Um, a really, really great event, especially uh, kind of timely, don't you think? Because it's a uh, holiday season coming up. And uh, this is kind of when most people do kind of the most damage to their their wallets and their credit scores. So this is a good, good, good uh, opportunity to learn more about how to be smart with credit. So you can, uh, of course, I'll include some uh, details in the show notes, jessicamorales.com slash 131, but just go to millennialmoneymeetup.com and there will be a button on uh, there where you can buy tickets. Um, you should probably do that pretty soon because I know they're going to sell out in the next mm, probably few days. So uh, make sure to do that that. Also, if you're not part of my book club yet, we'll get in there. Uh, basically, uh, I've been started doing this in the summer. Um, I started with uh, Aaron Lowry with Broke Millennial. And then the uh, next one I did was back in September with Andrew Hellam. We read uh, Millionaire Teacher. And my next one is going to be happening on December 9th. We're reading The uh, Wealthing Like Rabbits by Robert Brown. Uh, it's honestly one of like the the books that I, I absolutely love, but I recommend it to everybody, especially if you're Canadian, because it is uh, for Canadians. And there's you know nothing against if you're not Canadian, but I find a lot of finance books out there are uh, American. So sometimes being a Canadian, you're like, oh wait, we don't have 401ks. What do we have? So this is a really good uh, book for Canadians. And if you want to join me and everybody else reading the book and uh, you know, the author in person, go to jessicamorehouse.com slash book club. Of course, I'll include this in the show notes as well, uh, because we will be getting together in my Facebook group uh, and doing a Facebook live with the author. So you can ask your questions live and we could chat about the book and the topics and everything like that. Um, I've got a bunch of other really exciting book clubs coming up in the new year in 2018. So uh, you'll definitely want to get on my email list to find out all that stuff first. Uh, yeah. So what did I say? Okay. We got the millennial money meetup that's coming up book club that's coming up. Um, also again, this is only if you're Toronto, sorry, but I will be doing a free workshop, uh, care of the Toronto public library. Um, and, uh, it will be all about, uh, you know, how to manage your money as a freelancer, because I certainly know, I know that quite personally now. And, uh, also it, it's been interesting, you know, going through my own journey and seeing, you know, my husband, he's been a freelancer for 10 years. And, uh, so it'll be a really cool workshop. It's free. Um, again, I'll include, uh, some uh, details about that in the show notes. So uh, you can come if you're around. All right. So that is it for me. I do not have a listener series episode for you tomorrow. However, I do have another episode for you tomorrow that you will not want to miss. So make sure to subscribe. If you're listening on iTunes, YouTube, SoundCloud, whatever, hit that subscribe button so you do not miss it. And I will see you back here tomorrow. 